G'day Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem, and in this video we're going to have a look at uh, the V1 and some different ways to take them out. So the V1 is essentially a flying bomb. It's an unmanned aircraft which uses a gyroscopic system to send autopilot commands to the elevator and to the rudder. This helps control its desired attack course and altitude. The V1 is not a precision weapon, but it's instead used to check general areas about 7 miles wide. So for your sighting purposes, it's going to be 25 feet long and has a wingspan of around 18 feet and it's powered by an Argus Pulse jet engine. This creates a unique sound which led to the buzz bomb nickname which it was given. This V1 is mounted on a ski jump ramp for launching, however they were also able to be launched from a Heinkel 1111. The V1 has a range of around 500 k's, so these launch sites were often located along the French and Dutch coasts. The launch itself is pretty cool, so I wanted to provide a couple of extra angles of it. And from underneath you can actually see part of the launch mechanism uh, come out from underneath. After launching, it's going to cruise at about 350 to 400 miles an hour, between two to 3,000 foot of altitude. So your best chances of killing one of these is going to be if you're flying a Tempest Mark V or a Spitfire Mark 14. Once the V1 reaches its calculated target, the engine cuts out and the V1 glides down until the impact, which detonates the warhead. So if you're in a position on the ground to hear the engine and suddenly it cuts out, that's the point you know it's time to start taking cover. And the warhead inside of a V1 is about 1800 pounds, so it definitely makes a big size explosion. So now we know a little bit about the V1, we'll look at some ways to take them out. Alright, so here we are flying the Mark V Tempest, uh, which just has the regular Sabre 2 engine, so we don't have the extra boost with this. Um, so in order to get behind the V1, we're going to use the extra altitude that we have uh, over the top of this thing and convert it into some airspeed. So we're going to start our dive. I'm also going to have um, a fair bit of lead pursuit here. Um, it's essentially we're trying to do a stern conversion to pull in behind him and be within range uh, for a gunshot. And because this um, V1 is travelling so fast, you can see the amount of lead pursuit that I've got here. It's actually quite a lot, um, because some, right now I'm only crossing 400 miles an hour. So right about now is when I'm going to have a speed advantage against the V1. So I'm still pulling lead on it, just flying my nose towards what I believe is going to be an approximate cutoff point. So as you start reaching the same kind of altitude as it, watching the closure, and then you can adjust your own course accordingly. Um, that way you're adjusting the pursuit curve to allow you to come in behind the V1 with closure under control. And during this dive I've been you know, full RPM and full throttle so I'm going as fast as this Tempest will go. And you can see that the closure isn't really that much greater even though I'm doing over 400 miles an hour. So now we can just slide in behind and you have the option of either shooting it or you can do the wing tipping technique which we're going to have a look at in a minute. So right now you're about 100 meters away from the V1 and this is equal to around about 110 yards and the recommended attack distance to go after these was uh, no closer than 200 yards um, because otherwise you'll be at risk of um, damaging yourself from the resulting explosion because the warhead is so big. And even though I am pretty close to the V1 um, with the regular engine, the Tempest isn't going to be able to maintain speed more than likely against it, so it's going to be easier to just reduce the throttle a bit and slow down your speed so that way the V1 starts getting away from you and then it will uh, move outside you know, the range that's going to cause damage to you. So you just pull the power back, put the V1 in your sight, and once you estimate it's outside of about 200 yards, you can fire and pull out of the way of the explosion, but explosion won't damage me in that case. So the next example, again we're in the Tempest but this time we've got the boosted Sabre engine so we're going to have a lot more power at our disposal. And there's the V1 down there. Got a lot more altitude to work with and this time we're going to do a split S and then come down on top of it. You want to have enough altitude separations to do this Otherwise, if you're trying to pull too many G's, you'd be at risk of blacking out. 
it's a much faster way to intercept compared to the previous one and because we have the boosted Sabre engine um, you have more power so it means you're going to be able to have a greater rate of closure and you'll actually be able to um, maintain speed alongside the V1 so in this situation we're going to actually do uh, the wing tipping technique so essentially this is going to be really close formation flying and the good thing about the V1 is that it's going to fly nice and straight for you so as long as you're not in any uh, crazy turbulence or anything it's going to be relatively simple to pull up alongside and remember we'll do this by having a course that's slightly different to the V1s so this way we're moving over and towards it and the V1 is going to stay in the same position on the canopy it's just going to get larger so we adjust our course and our power setting don't even look at anything else with the V1 because we're just trying to fly formation with it it's like gentle stirring of the stick to adjust your position and there's always going to be really small throttle movements as well to account for the changing of the closure now we want to get our left wing under the V1's right wing so this is always the tricky part now you're getting in even smaller movements so if you really needed to you can use the rudder to adjust your course ever so slightly and as we get the wing in position we'll bank to the right and pull up at the same time and we'll change the course of that V1 now the reason why this works is that there's no gyroscope that controls the roll of the V1 so if you can upset its bank angle it's not going to be able to correct it so this leads to it changing direction and diving down into the deck So here we're flying a Spitfire Mark 14. We're already in position behind the V1, and in this case we're going to use the machine guns to shoot at it. In the Tempest with those cannons, um, that's going to be the most likely scenario of destroying the warhead, which causes the explosion when you're shooting at it. However, with the machine guns and the lower caliber, um, that's more likely just going to start damaging control surfaces, which will lead to an out-of-control situation for the V1. So you can see peppering it with the machine guns starts losing the flight control surface at which point it can't control its flight path anymore and it just rolls over or go into the water so in this example uh, we're going to finish off here this is what happens if you're trying to shoot the V1 at too close of a range. See the explosion has damaged the airplane, caused a pretty big crack along the wing which would actually rip off if I pulled um, excessive amount of G's or flew too fast. So in this case you're either going to bail out or you'll glide to uh, a belly landing somewhere. So yeah, stay outside of 200 yards when you make the shot, and this won't happen to you. That concludes the video for how to attack V1s though. Till next time, remember to fly safe and check your six.